Hi, my name is Paul Sutner, and I just want to take a look at a question I've been getting recently on how to handle creating a Kappa design using Autodesk Inventor. And the answer is really twofold. We can actually use two different utilities to process a, a Kappa design uh, problem. One actually is a utility that comes with the Inventor install, and that is the Design Assistant, and that'll be the first video I'll create our workflow around. Uh, the second is going to be using the Autodesk Vault application. And it's basically the data management application that comes with all of your artist products. There's a couple different flavors of, of Vault uh, that are available, but at the core level, each flavor does come with a copy design process. And I'll make a second tutorial video regarding that process uh, later on. So first off, just taking a look at this sample assembly, we have a caulking gun. And in case we need to make a copy into this, we need to make a few changes. Um, customers requiring different changes, and we need to make a couple different iterations to this. Uh, how do we go ahead and do that? Um, so as we're making change of these files, it's all dependent on the current instances of our parts. And if we need to make new iterations, we basically need to process a, a copy design of this entire assembly and start to get some new iterations of the parts that actually are going to change. So the first thing we can actually take a look at is using this design assistant, uh, which again becomes part of the install package of Inventor. So underneath your yearly release of Inventor, you'll find a utility below the uh, tools under our program files uh, for Design Assistant. So once I open this up, it's basically going to give me the ability to process a few different changes uh, with our files, one being a copy design process. So we'll have a couple different actions we can, we can take a look at. Um, of course, regarding this video, we'll take a look at using the copy action. Uh, but there's also a few other things I'll take a look at uh, during this process. So first and foremost, it's it's really kind of a combination of uh, save copy as amongst several different files to give me a new iteration of this entire assembly. So the first thing we're going to do is make a, a top level action of copying and again just right click options here to copy my co caulking gun and let's change the name of this file and I have a, another subfolder ready to go called my v2 instance. So let's change our location and of course give it a new name for our new iteration. So I'll deposit this in our new caulking gun v2 folder and as I change and make that copy I can see my new name being presented and the new subfolder that is now being located within. So during our new v2 instance you know what is going to change? What parts that make up that assembly do we actually need to make edits to uh, so that it's going to change in one assembly but still leave the other one the other assembly that is unchanged. So if I need to make a change to this casing part, I'm going to right click on this file, do a copy, and let's do the same thing. I'm basically going to do a save copy as on the fly for all of my parts that need to get updates and need to get some changes. And let's give those new files a different name. So again, kind of a, a save copy as on the fly, but still keeping intact my entire assembly. So what else we can do inside of this dialog box is not only make some copied instances of it, but we can also do a rename function. So um, all of the relationships an inventor brings to the table, it's always a best practice to try to use Design Assistant or, again, Autodesk Vault to manage renaming anything or relocating so many different files. Uh, it's not always a, a trap, but if you do some of this stuff in Windows Explorer, uh, the tendency exists to possibly break some of those relationships. Um, so always use either Design Assistant or Autodesk Vault to start to manage moving and relocating files, renaming files, and in this case, uh, copying files. Uh, now what you can also do is, if I already did a save copy as on a file, let's say maybe uh, the locking mechanism, I've already done a save copy as, I made a new iteration, and I've already edited it. Um, what I can do is basically replace this iteration in my V2 assembly, if I already have a new locking mechanism, I can just replace this current instance and replace it with, again, whatever I called my new uh, edited version. So it's, it brings to the table just uh, the ability to handle a couple different changes and processing those changes uh, to give me my new instance of my parent file, in this case, my caulking gun. So let's save our changes here. Let's go back to Inventor and take a look at our changes. So here's my original. Close this down. Let's open up our V2 assembly. 
You can notice the two files we made copies of in our new subfolder. And just taking a look at our model browser here for a second, I can see my V2 naming scheme coming into play with this new instance of our assembly. So I'll, let's go ahead and just edit this, this casing. Maybe the casing is gonna get just a, a basic change based on a customer requirement. Maybe we just make a couple different iterations of this casing and we need to update a couple different versions of our caulking gun. Just make a simple change. You can see the casing, maybe gonna envelop the tubing that's gonna be coming in place and making a simple change. Now, as I save this, let's go and open up the original and see what happened. Since we have different iterations of that casing, I now have a, a workflow to make some subtle changes, make new instances of our parts that are going to change or need to be edited, but still leave behind the original references uh, intact. So it just becomes a matter of how do I want to organize our files? If some of these files are going to be reused, you know, maybe we put those in a different subfolder where I can collectively gather um, all those common files. If it's parts that are going to be changed amongst different iterations of my, my assembly, again, just taking advantage of different subfolders to uh, allocate where I want to deposit all those different references. So it's, it's a little bit arbitrary as to how you organize your files, but um, here's kind of going through a different workflow and how do we actually handle uh, that copy design process. So again, in the next tutorial, we'll take a look at uh, one other workflow and that is using the uh, Autodesk Vault copy design process. So thank you for your time. Again, Paul Center with Advanced Solutions. I hope this helps you with your copy design techniques.